This is the Environmental Protection Commission regular meeting, Wednesday, March 6, 2024. This is a regular meeting. The first piece of new business is EPC 06 2024 106 Stephen Mather Road and Checkets to construct a residential addition and related features proximate to the wetlands and water courses. The property lies along the south side of Stephen Mather Road, just east of Maplewood Drive, and is identified as map number one, lot number 29, the zone is R2, and it is approximately 2.341 acres. So, Chairman, the uh, applications made its way to our agenda tonight for acceptance to start the statutory time clock, determine if a public hearing is warranted, and if you had any preliminary comments based on your review of the plans or um, uh, inspection in the field. Just as an aside, this property has been before the EPC some number of times. Three the times latest down. back in in 2021 where they got permission to put the in-ground pool in and proximate to wetlands. So that construction is ongoing and um, the, uh, the applicant is currently proposing to do a small addition on the house to, uh, I think it has some pool, um, you know, like pool house functions, but it's going to be attached to the house. But it hadn't been included in the prior approval, so um, they filed a new application because it does lie in part in regulated areas. It's actually to the, land, we'll call it the landward side of the pool. Um, so we're doing a, a um, I've been to the site, reviewed the files, spoken to the applicant, there's going to be some de minimis amount of inf additional information as to things on drainage and water quality in some past um, areas that need to be reinforced for planting. There is a real good planting plan from the last for areas way in the back, but mm -hmm. um, uh, there may be some opportunities to restore some planting in the front pocket well, and that's there as well. They didn't do it yet, did they? No. 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 They have the planting plan that we approved. No. Yeah, no, because they have to wait till springtime. They, they were actually, when I was there, they were, had the landscaper out to look at the scope of work when we were there. So it's imminent probably in the next two or three months. Okay. Bill? Well, it does open up. We can look back there, right? Back in the wetland area. And you know, even though I realize they're putting a small little development up in the front, but I always like to walk back and, and see what's really going on back there. And, it's a little confusing to me um, exactly where that planting would be, and it would be nice to have that flagged to kind of get the layout. And there's a treehouse now. How's that going to affect it? I, I'm not against treehouses. I love treehouses, but I mean, I'm curious about that. I had them upload the planting plan onto the old planting plan. Yeah, it's here. Website. Yeah, I saw it, but I, you know, it's kind of I'm curious about. Well, the other pieces that I didn't quite understand was where the property line was. So, for example, the stone wall is back there. Mm. Is that the property line? Or does, there's, because there's a couple things that confuse me. There's actually a, called an approved conservation easement of 12,435 feet that was noted on one of these 2015 plans. <coughs> and I, I didn't see anything about that. It'd be interesting to see what uh, is there, what's the verbiage on that? Where is that located? It was on their um, February 5th, 2015 surveyor by Peter Meyer Company. Approved conservation easement, 12,435 square feet. So I don't know where that lies in there. So the whole area back there confuses me um, because the stone wall, obviously there's a huge amount of leaves that have been thrown over that stone wall to where they're crushing. Any kind of thing that was in there, it's like six, seven feet thick, is my guess. So um, you know, that's not a real good sign for a wetland that's behind there. But that could be the conservation easement, which still doesn't make it right. I don't know. It's so I'm up for all flags. You know, I love flags. Flag the planning area. Flag the uh, where that easement is. Flag the property line. So you walk back there and you get a little hang of what's going on. And also they've got this. Uh, what is it? They're going to do a rain garden, and it'd be nice to flag that area too, because you know it's that whole area is a giant lawn, super wet at mm. night. It's like going to be floating back there. <laughs> yeah. So that's my kind of. Uh, items that I'd, I'd be curious about. Yeah, I know they're going to say, well, all we're adding is a little piece of, uh, of a house up there, but that opens up for me to look back what's really going on. Just for the record, the uh, stone wall is the rear property boundary. Okay, good. Now it'll be interesting to see if that conservation easement still exists, because uh, it was noted on one of those. 
You had to literally look on that, that February 5th, 2015 to find a little bit of note on it. Where did you find that? Because it wasn't online. I mean, it wasn't part of the package. Um, the February 2015, February 2015, it was a site plan. Proposed, it was a proposed site plan, February 5th, 2015. Surveyor of Peter Meyer Company. Okay. And then there's a teeny little thing that says- and that should be included in the survey, correct? Rick? Well, it should be on the site plan if it- if Yeah, it should right. be. I mean, it just- Yeah, I didn't see it any place else other than the 2015. Okay. Got no other place. So that's what I kind of picked up when I was down there. Oh, well, okay, I see what, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you see that little- I thing? see, I, yeah, I, I, February 2015, yeah, I didn't so realize that. Go down the toward where the planning's supposed to be, and there's a little note there. On the, on the new one or the, um, pr or the prior approval? The 2015 one. Okay. There's a little piece there. Well, that's something there. Um, yep, no questions. I'm just noting that um, the proposed addition will have a crawl space as opposed to a, a basement or anything else. So that, that was the only thing I was focused on. Okay, um, on the site development plan in notes 5 and 18, they refer to the town of Greenwich. Okay, maybe they're, they obviously cut and paste something wrong. Okay, but, but you know. Mm -hmm. And it bothers me that they're just cutting and basing and doing stuff like that, and, with, and there's no editing. Okay, uh, I, and note in the construction, note 20, it refers to the Greenwich Sewer Department. So, okay, um, since I believe Stephen Mather is not on, is, is on septic, not on sewer, okay, uh, one, it's, it's an incorrect note, which sort of bothers me, it's just lack of, de lack of attention to detail yeah. sort of bothers me in this one. So if you could tell them to clean that up, okay, and review it, um, because I'd like that resubmitted, if, if possible. Yep. Jim? The, this one's an easy one for me to inspect, because we, we live not far from here, and I go across Stephen Mather constantly. I've been watching this pool project for, <laughs> it seems like, over 18 months. This is <laughs> going to be one beautiful pool it's taking so long to build. Uh, but from a practical point of view, the, I have to look back and look what, what is labeled in Rick's summaries. It frankly seemed, certainly with Bill Wright's good comments needing to be addressed, and, and your, Eric, uh, being careful about details, what they're proposing, in my view, makes perfectly good sense. Carolyn? Um, Quick question. Um, so in the back of the property, there's a uh, white pipe. It's like, I would say, 8 to 10 inches white pipe, and it has water coming out of it, um, sort of creating pools in the depressions that are existing in the wetlands. And I'm just wondering, um, where is that coming from? What, where is that water coming from? Mm -hmm. um, and Because I didn't really see on here where it was coming from. Um, also, the pool fence was, the, the old application from 2021 is not available online, so I couldn't look it up, but I was wondering, was the pool fence approved as part of that application? Yes. It was, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, let's see, oh right, there's another pipe coming from the corner of the pool. Um, it's like a, you know, one of those corrugated pipes and then it has a white long pipe attached to it. I'm just wondering, <clears throat> it, wh where is that, <clears throat> is that from the um, curtain drain that they're putting in? No, I think they have a trench drain that is installed or a, um, it, it, it would be This is on the old plan. Oh, okay. But there is a, um, there is a pool plan and it has like a strip drain and that's going to go, that's part of what's going to the rain, rain garden. garden. Okay. And we um, do need additional rain garden details. The one that was approved yeah. in 2021 wasn't very good. I've already talked to the applicant about it and about not only the, the soil material and the, um, and the planting plan as well for it. Okay. Um, no additional, <clears throat> there will be no additional tree loss anywhere? Um, as, no. Okay. And I didn't think so because they're displacing um, patio. Um, and 
Oh, right. I also, um, it looks like in the last plan, there wasn't anything to mark or to restore the, the, I guess you would call it a pocket wetland, the one that's out by the road. It's lawn right now, and it was just, you know, thinking we should probably do something about yeah, I've that. I already talked to the applicant about that. Um, and, right, it says in the prior, prior plan, 2021, there was a 5,000 square foot buffer of, um, plantings to displace lawn and it doesn't look like there's any evidence Bill brought that up so I just wanted to mention that that's all I have can you actually go back to that plan plan and ask the planting plan and ask them to put a boulder demarcation around or is that like asking too much uh, yes but we could because <clears throat> it's, it's a giant lawn it might get creep again you know? yeah and also that all the plantings are are native true natives <laughs> Boy, yeah, I didn't look them all up. They had uh, their original names, so. Um, um, it's but a the robust thing is, though, plant. So they had, is, an, yes. they had an approved planting plan. Right. Do you want to go have them go back and look at the, the one that was approved or for the new stuff that we're going to propose for the front? Uh, I mean, I, I just want to make sure there's nothing even though it's already approved that it would be anything that we would object to today by today's standards um since it's just two three years ago probably not but i'm i'm i just would like to verify that they're native plantings and be absolutely certain of that for the the new plantings okay here's a thought or a question because garland you're very consistent with with that observation on all of our applications. Should we just kind of make it a part of the applicant's notations at the bottom? They're, these are quite extensive. Mm. That li builds in another column and says native or mm -hmm. what I'm asking somewhat now, native. <laughs> when I'm asking for additional information, yeah. I put it in the that you should be in utilizing right. the true native plantings okay. to the extent feasible. Sometimes you can't, but. Yeah, okay. Well, if they incorporate some, it's a, a, it's a good head start. Yeah, thank you. Okay, anybody else on this one? Okay, moving on to old business. EPC 34-2023, 12 Musket Lane. A. Gorodetsky and E. Gorodetsky to construct a residential addition approximate to wetlands and watercourses. Property lies along the north side of Musket Lane, approximately 450 feet east of Raymond Street, and is identified as map 33, lot number 5-6. The zone is R1 half, and it is approximately 0 0.532 acres. So, Chairman, um, this application has been before the EPC on two separate occasions in December and I think in February. And testimony was provided to address the issues that were raised during the application process, including the uh, drainage impact, water quality, um, planting mitigation, um, uh, impact of basement drainage, et cetera. And uh, as a result of that testimony, the uh, applicant, or I was directed to develop a resolution um, uh, for the board's consideration. And that's what's uh, here tonight before you with the proposed effective date of March 7, 2024. Um, outlined conditions, and if you have any questions. Um, we, every commissioner has a copy of that mm -hmm. and reviewed yes. it? Yep. Yes. Okay, I'm sure you did your English teacher yes. on it. I found one <laughs> very <laughs> modest. <laughs> found a comma. <laughs> found a comma. Oh, 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 oh. Comma one. Ooh. Boy. All right. Uh, You're going to put me out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, any questions or comments for? No? Mm -mm. Jim, can I have a motion? Uh, certainly. I'd make a motion to approve the permit to conduct regulated activities with respect to EPC number 34 2023. I'd like to uh, second that uh, approval of the permit, 34-2023. All in favor? Aye. Right. Okay. Moving on to the next piece of old business, it's EPC 36-2023, the 
670 Hollow Tree Ridge Road, DEACG2, comma, LLC, to maintain a deer fence and install landscaping approximate to wetlands and water courses. Property lies along the south side of Hollow Tree Ridge Road, approximately 650 feet west of Oxridge Lane, and is identified as map number seven. The, the lot is 50, the zone is R2, and it is approximately 3.158 acres. Mr. Chairman, the, uh, the application is on the CD's agenda for uh, discussion purposes. So the, uh, the applicant seeks the board's permission, and I'll give you some historical perspective as well, to maintain a fence that was installed on the pro that's in regulated areas at the back of the property. It's in the upland review area. Um, and to re-landscape uh, some, some space that had been, um, had been fine graded and lawn installed. And um, from a historic perspective, the development of this parcel was not subject to a prior EPC permit. There's a pocket wetland in the front, take some storm drainage from the street. There is a more extensive area of wetlands for rear of the property that is, that is wooded. So there's wetlands and water courses, part of a much larger system. Again, it did not appear before the EBC because they demonstrated uh, to my predecessor that more than, that all activities would be maintained greater than 50 feet um, than from the, um, the, regu from the uh, wetlands. So all work was outside of regulated areas. Uh, flash forward some number of months, there had been an encroachment into um, the regulated areas at the back of the property, some clearing. A permit application was sought and the board or the commission approved a, a plan that called for the installation of a certain number of evergreen trees and some other trees in the back um, and the placement of some demarcation boulders, not providing the full 50 feet, but a much lesser setback to um, the wetlands and water courses. Flash forward to um, the uh, inspections for um, uh, consideration of a certificate of occupancy or completion. And I developed a list of necessary items that needed to be addressed um, in order to gain staff approval for it. And it related to drainage and some um, um, depiction of, or uh, identification of some, some pipes that were, had, been, had remained, but had been, you know, also subsequently learned later that had been abandoned. There had been some modifications to the drainage. We had to, um, didn't have a full sump and bell trap, had to add some structures. Um, there was some stabilization issues, but also noted was the fence that had been installed and the encroachments into the, reg the regulated areas, the pot more so the pocket well and at the front of the property. Um, the applicant has hired a professional engineer. We're nearly resolved with all the compliance issues on site. Some of them require some spring attention this spring. Um, we've narrowed the list down from, you know, probably by 80%, 90%, but they had to come back to one, consider uh, for, the, uh, for the commission's approval of the fence, if they uh, believe it can and should remain, and for the re-landscaping. So you see in the, um, in your, in your packages that uh, uh, Land Tech has prepared a site plan and they provided certification language with the fence. Um, you know, it is a chain link fence. It is not in the wetlands. It goes through the upland review area. Um, the evergreen planting had been in, evergreen planting had been installed. A secondary layer of planting in the rear of the property had not been installed. And then what are we going to do in the front around this very limited pocket wetland? And so they have, back to the fence, certified no impact on drainage. Mr. Sinali is going to discuss elements about, about the fence. Uh, in his presentation, but you know there's been a very extensive 
replanting plan that's been prepared. They will, in the <coughs> terms of the pocket wetland, um, there's some um, more um, uh, orbi herbaceous growth in there. They want to remove some of that. They can do it mechanically by hand. They're going to clean out the sediment in there in front of a pipe. They're going to replant um, not only the wetland, but also remove sod and, and do some restoration planting. And the numbers of the plants um, are outlined in the um, agenda summary report. It's a, it's a combination of tree shrubs and ground covers. The, um, in the rear of the property, we had them supplement what was there. So you have the, in amongst the evergreens is where the fence lies, and they're doing a lower tier of, of shrub plantings. Again, displacing the manicured lawn, coming up something that has some conservation value and is going to uh, filter runoff as well. So that's the, probably the extent of my, um, my presentation. Andy's here for questions and to provide his own presentation if necessary. And um, we'll go from there. Andy. <clears throat> Good evening for the record, Andy Sumalides. I'm a principal with Lantech out of Westport. Um, we were on this project from day one when uh, we were hired to do a site plan for a new single family residence. So I'm just gonna visually take you back through um, what occurred on this property and take you through the timeline of where we are today. So this shows that- Before what they put in the fence, before? Yeah, this was before- Before and before. Okay. Before and before. This okay, is be, be, before we got involved. Correct. Right. And this is your prior, your predecessors got involved with this approval. So mm -hmm. um, during demo and uh, demoing the house and some of that tree clearing happened actually before even foundations were poured. Um, so the, the tree contractor took down some dead stuff. I think there was about five trees in the upland review area that were taken down at the time. Um, we went out there, investigated it, came up with this planting plan, which is this row of arborvitae, some red maple behind it, and that boulder demarcation wall. Um, so this was approved. I think there was 13 arborvitae, I think 24 were installed. Um, and in place of the boulders, they decided to put up a deer fence on the backside of these arborvitae. So fast forward a bit. House gets built, um, fence gets put in without a permit. Right here, you can see this dash line is that 50 foot upland review area. The trees were installed in the right location. Um, as Rick had mentioned, there was some encroachment allowed of lawn area. So before anything happened, this encroachment already was there. It was already lawn area within the upland review area. Um, so we, what we asked for was, you know, basically just to square off this, this backyard as part of that approval and maintain some of that lawn that already existed and then give up some of that lawn in certain other areas. So we kind of just picked a line and that's where the arborvitae stood. Um, and right behind that is where that deer fence was installed. Um, the, con the, 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 the house contractor didn't do it. It was the homeowner who went to a landscaper and just went and got it done. So it was one of those side moves that nobody knew about and the homeowner thought he could just do it. There was boulders there. We explained to him what the boulders were meant for. It was a demarcation. Um, so he thought fence would be appropriate also without really going through all the proper channels. So here we are with the deer fence that's been installed. Um, the deer fence, if you guys had a chance to go take a look at it, there are about 19 um, posts, steel posts. It's black chain link. Um, it's about uh, six or eight feet high, I think six feet high, uh, no top or bottom rail. Um, and I know one of the concerns potentially could be, you know, the migration of critters back and forth. Uh, the chain link pretty much goes down to grade in, in mostly all places. There is a gate in a section of the fence also to allow for maintenance um, behind there. Um, there is a storm drainage catch basin in the town's road that goes through our property and dumps back there so it allows somebody to go back there maintain and make sure it's draining properly so there's a gate to get back into that space um 
we feel you know the fence is a good barrier um, to prevent for further migration into um, the upland and we don't see any impacts from a drainage perspective it can still sheet flow um, and then fast forward to what we're proposing as mentioned um, those arborvitae were installed and then now in front of that um, taking out some more lawn area are some shrubs um, some na native shrubs that are kind of kind of frame in those arborvitae and help with um, the fertilization coming off the water quality of the manicured lawn um, those will function nicely um, these shrubs in, in a better manner honestly than the red maples would have in the in the back of that conservation so we feel that's a nice trade-off uh, of these shrubs um, here's that little pocket wetland in the front that was discussed and what had happened is again this was historically a lot of lawn area also encroaching in there um, but with the f final construction you could see some fine grading and you know sod was placed down there where throughout the rest of the property was so the um, the homeowners hired Glengate to come up with this planting plan um, so you could see it's a pretty robust extensive planting plan it's in the front of the property so they really want to obviously aesthetically make it look good um, and again uh, native shrubs and grasses and the such are being proposed in there um, it is again a catch basin in the road that basically just dumps into here and into this wetland and this wetland eventually fills up probably and goes down the property line and um, gets into that larger wetland system in the back um, so that's pretty much it that's what we're looking for is the approval of maintaining that deer fence and adding um, this and implementing this placement plan Carolyn, would you like to move? um yeah i'll start um so what happened to the red maples that were in the original plan there were seven of them that were recommended um it was a combination of as you mentioned the red maples it was balsam fir that were originally approved and then there was a wetland mix that was between the wetlands and the upland review area and then of course the boulders um so the boulders were removed and replaced with the fence as i understand um but it it in Rick's um, write-up, he said that the, or in the June 2021 EPC permit that was issued, um, it said that this was to restore, the, this planting plan was to restore regulated areas that were impacted by tree cutting and grading activities in the rear of the property. <coughs> So I'm thinking that if red maples were part of the project, those are pretty big trees. Um, the arborvitae, I mean, I, I don't really see them as an equal tree to the red maples. I'm just wondering what happened to those and, and to the wetland mix. So the wetland mix was installed? It was installed. Correct. Okay. Um, the red maples i don't have a an answer for why they were omitted originally um they just were never so the arborvitae were planted early on um obviously a lot of builders like to get the arborvitae in and get the growth and the screening going so mm -hmm. that's one of the first things they do um so the arborvitae were done early on in the project and then you know through construction they never revisited the red maple and i don't know why they were never installed red maples are um you know they you know they live about 200 years a lot of them mm -hmm. um you know they have an extensive root system which might be a beneficial um feature in that wet area um as opposed to just the arborvitae um i don't think they would be opposed to it okay if okay that's a sticking point i mean I think um, we yeah i mean that's just you know they're a medium to large tree and Mm -hmm. you know they grow up to like 60 feet tall they mature quickly um you know and they're easy to grow there's mm -hmm. little maintenance you know unlike with the um arborvitae which you know they're very pest and disease you know they're very subject to disease and pests mm -hmm. um i just think better trees were initially proposed and they weren't put in so i was just wondering about that sure um, and then my other question is with regard to, I like the, the very robust planting plan uh, for the pocket wetland. 
Um, it didn't show the Upland Review area line on, on the map that we had. Um, how far from the actual wetland does that planting plan extend? So 30 to 35 feet. Okay, okay. Um, and the um, Phragmites, that's another thing that I'm concerned about. Um, it says they're going to be removed by hand. Um, it, will there be um, follow-up to make, because, you know, they're very difficult to mm -hmm. eradicate. Um, I'm just wondering, again, also, I did not, obviously not, um, I'm not a landscape architect, but um, I did a little bit of research in various ways to, you know, mitigate Phragmites, and this uh, wetland area looks like it's pretty submerged, right? Um, it sounds, from what I, on the Yukon website, it showed that if you cut them and their, their roots stay, if the tops of them stay submerged, that can, you know, and then, and then you don't have to, I, I mean, I don't want to get into the details mm -hmm. of how, I just want to make sure that we do the least amount of disturbance to the wetland is possible to eradicate them. Sure. Yeah, that, um, and, um, and then the follow-up with them. And um, uh, those are all my questions for, I may have some other questions after hearing that other people. Jim? I don't have any questions at this time, Eric. I, I agree with Carolyn, I think the, the planning plan is very robust, but it's not in the area that mm -hmm. relates to the fence. So um, I would like to see some remediation in the part of the wetlands independent of the front part, which I can understand why the homeowners want to put the planning there because that's in their view. But in the back, that's where the fence is. Right. So um, I, I agree, if there were some red maples um, or some robust trees, that would seem to be appropriate. It doesn't have to be uh, necessarily on the side of the fence towards the home. It could be on the other side where the wetlands actually right, are. Right, where it was originally the proposed. The review is, yep. yeah. Absolutely agree with that. I think, how many tree, How many red maples were supposed to be there? They seven. Were seven, I think? Seven. seven ought to go. You ought to okay. put seven in the front. If you, if you can't get them all in the back, Five, six, put them seven, in the yeah. front. Sure. You ought to get seven maples in there, and they ought to get those boulders in there. I mean, that's what we expected to go, and then they went ahead and did what they wanted to. So, boulder demarcation and seven nice ma red maples. That's that would with be the nice. fence. With either side of that fence, they, if you're going to leave the, the fence is in, right? You're right. Not take the fence down. I guess we're not taking the fence down, right? No. Yeah. Then, uh, then at least they need to have those uh, those maples, seven maples, put on either side of in sure. the lawn or in the back. It's, I'm not sure where it's most important, but sure. Well, if you, you know, assuming this commission agrees with this, you can discuss that with Rick and, sure. and just the... The boulders don't make sense to me. You want boulders with the fence. I feel like the fence... The fence, are, the fence is back behind all that. The boulders are to keep the lawn from ever encroaching back in there. A couple of trees die, all of a sudden they're using that lawn. That's why we're using boulders. Right, but the boulders in the Boulder? same vicinity of the fence. Well, if I... The boulders. the boulders were going to be right in front of the arbor vitae, the fence is right behind the arbor vitae. Right, the fence is behind, but originally right. we didn't we want the boulders in front of where the lawn it would be the lawn, the boulders, and then you were going to have whatever plantings. Wasn't that how it originally mm -hmm. was set up? Well, yeah, the, so here's the boulders right in front of the arbor vitae. Right. So the lawn ends here now. There's right. arbor vitae, and then the, there's a fence right behind it. Right. And where these where boulders are going to go, Should we're going to go, there's... We're, Proposing shrubs now, actually, well, so we're reducing the lawn even more. I don't have a problem with reducing the lawn anymore. I mean, they, right. they took advantage of what we'd asked them to do. So if they need to reduce that lawn by putting boulders, shrubs, and ivory bodies, I'm okay with that. But if that's too much, then you have to all agree on that. Mm -hmm. But that's what we actually wanted originally: was boulder demarcation, some way to make that runoff slow down before it got in there, and then you know the tree lines, and cl including the red maples, and the fence wasn't part of that whole thing. So uh, you know, that, that's my personal opinion. Sure. We ought to go back to the way it was. Leave the fence in, that's fine at this point, but go back to the way we requ requested. And because they did it wrong, so, so I'm sorry, you have to lose a little more lawn. So, so I think you can, we can do some adjustments to the planting plan. You can spot some maples in the I like I like the the low tier of of conservation value shrubs. 
They okay. can spot some some bone demarcation at along the edge of lawn, which is going to begin. It's coming in even further. We can spot some maples in there, and that's a good point about the follow-up, particularly with the Phragmites, like we talked about before. So we can add that standard condition that they do a follow-up in in a year to see what the progress is with the um, the management. I had them do low impact kind of stuff going there and pull, pulling them as opposed to treating the the yeah. Uh, well, no, no chemicals, right? No chemicals, but we can we can spot some maples in there. We can spot some some bolo bol demarcation in some areas, and then do the follow up um, the the standard language with the the condition for follow up inspection and uh, review of the planting and the uh, invasive treatments. I mean, the other thing yeah. is, is like I noticed that yeah. there's a lot of. You know the the water courses, oh, you know, through the backyard, you know, because it kind of slants down toward the arborvitae in the fence. Um, I mean, you know, if if we're going to be putting, if we put boulders in there, you know, maybe it would it would be beneficial because the new plantings that are proposed are it's a very linear, you know, they're just like right in front of the arborvitae, mm -hmm. and, and you can see where the ground has kind of eroded around where the arborvitae were planted. You can kind of see the, the, the root balls almost. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be beneficial to put in like some kind of ground cover in there to kind of, you know, you know, kind of slow down the water going through there mm -hmm. so that it doesn't continue to erode the roots of the well, trees? Well, isn't it being channelized by the arborvitae? Hmm? Isn't it, you know, if, if I put an arborvitae here and this water slanting this way, the water has to part to go around. Yeah. Okay, to go around, and that would create, and that would increase its velocity and yes. scour. Yes. Yes. I mean, I'm not. That's what's, that's what's happening. I'm not an I've engineer licensed yeah. in the state of Connecticut, but no yeah. logic would tell me that. Yeah. So, so I so. Ground cover would slow it down a bit. Yeah. You know, so you'd have to put something like that there. Sure. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah. I mean, Maybe again, they're the they're going to be the, losing some lawn, but the, maybe they shouldn't have put the fence in. You know, well, they, they knew so they So how about had if they take the fence out, do they have to do any of this? Well, to be honest, <laughs> I'm not happy with how the fence was put in. Well, look, I it's mean, a valid question. If they go back to it, that's all. Take the I fence mean, out, if, if and you put your boulders and your red maples based on your original plan. If they, they were They still have to do the boulders, obviously. That's, that, that was the approved plan. And the red maple, like we talked about. But what if they take the fence out? They don't have to do it. I mean, if they were coming to us today to ask to put the fence in as it is, I would not vote for it because we've had this with other um, sure. applications. I do not think that posts should be put in concrete in upland review areas and in wetlands. I, I just don't. I mean, you know, there are occasions where we've been convinced of the value of a deer fence, but <laughs> we really would like to see them pounded in, not put in with concrete. Sure. This was put in with concrete. I, I it's just, it, to take it out now, I mean, the question is, is it gonna be, is it gonna it's be- It's more detrimental, I feel like you take it out now. Right, <laughs> I mean, I, I agree. don't know. Right. I was just throwing that out there. I'm just, right. That's a good question. <laughs> All right. So we can make adjustments to this. Yeah, we could fine tune it. And I, you know, I was going to have them put a firm lawn, limit of lawn and landscape on there, and then stabilize the soil with a you know some kind of ground cover, ground cover, or other treatments. They're doing their planting. You can spot some maples in there as well. In fact, the first iteration of this plant had a ton of maples on it. And a lot of them were in the front, mm -hmm. so they can you know, they can do some of that, and then we'll do the follow up, the follow up uh, inspection a year from the completion of the project. And uh, did I cover it all? You know, I, I'm not. Well, I can't be what people's preferences are to look at, but if you put some red maples in front of those, I mean, they're going to be magnificent. I know. I, I, I think that was this, the idea to begin with. Yeah. Instead of this, you know, <laughs> typical almost like a giant. 20 foot barrier now. Right. It's like a wall. So, right. You know, some people don't have that concept. They don't look that it's their backyard. But right. I think they're going to love it. It's beautiful. They're spectacular. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, thank, thank you. I appreciate it. No, thank you. Boulders. The other thing is the, the pipe that goes back there from the road. Um, you said the right. town has an easement to. No, no. There is no easement. There's no easement? No. No, nor do they want one. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so okay, so here's, <laughs> here's the question. Um, we could save that for that, another day. That pipe, um, the w water is like gushing. Like today, is gushing. Gushing out yeah. of the pipe so into the wetlands. And I mean, how do we feel about? I mean, we we're supposed to be protecting <laughs> wetlands. How do we feel about this immense amount of water being added to the wetlands? It was doing it before. Correct. What do you mean it was doing it the without the pipe? The, the pipe, a yeah. pipe, always existed on the property draining the street. This pipe to the wetlands went through. In fact, it's shown on the plan, I believe. It went through the old house. Mm. Underneath the old that's house. That's got to be. That's got to predate me. <laughs> Okay. okay. Uh, so, know, okay. In, in, in terms of, I mean, we in, wouldn't in allow that today, grade. though. Yeah. I mean, we wouldn't most likely allow that today. But so probably, we're just saying probably it was, not. Okay. But it's a storm drain, and so and so it's essentially grandfathered in. If I'm not okay, okay, because I mean, th when they put the storm drains in, probably to, when they built on, the road. What? When they built the road. Okay. And there's right. nothing else ad added to that pipe. It's it's purely from the road. There's nothing from the house that's added to that pipe. Um, our overflow is connected to that pipe also, I think. Um, yes, we have flows going into that pipe. But he has detention there. He has but I, we have a whole big stormwater system. detention. We're treating all of our runoff. Mm -hmm. The runoff from the road is not right, getting right, treated. Yeah, yeah. We didn't take that on. <laughs> so <laughs> right. so there's, road, there's, there's two catch basins, one here and one here. Mm -hmm. They're not connected. They're their own system. This is like the low-lying part of Hollow Tree. So this dumps directly into this wetland, and this dumps directly into this wetland. So it um, always did that. As I said, the old application isn't available online to see. So what detention was when the house oh. was built? What was put in? So there was a gravel drive. So we did low yep. impact development with the gravel drive, right? And then there's a large detention system here that takes all the roof runoff into that system. I underground detention? Yeah, there's 49 mm -hmm. coltex, 49 of those okay. plastic chambers. Okay. Underground. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot. That's impressive. Yeah. So, but this, you can yeah. see, goes through our property. Yeah. Yeah. No, I did see. Yeah. Our, this drain system is not connected. We have our footing drain connects into a manhole that goes out there. Oh, the one. footing drain. Right. Okay. But our detention would have come out, you know, on a high, high storm out of that catch basin right. in the driveway is our overflow for it. But this is one of the things I think Rick pointed out. There's some sediment that accumulates here over time because obviously yeah. with the road, it just right, goes right. in. Right, right, yeah. Hmm. So what happens in the uh, storm drain culvert that if it ever breaks and it, it goes right under the house? It used to. Oh, okay. You did, you did divert it around the house. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just he is an engineer <laughs> licensed in the state of Connecticut. <laughs> you know, that, but, um, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. <laughs> We've run into this in numerous other spots throughout town where yeah. um, they don't, the town doesn't yeah. want to take ownership of yep. these drain pipes. Mm. That the town put in? Correct. You'll and, have to explain and, that. And drains on private property. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a good, you know, I don't know what would happen, you know, the way I think Connecticut general statutes for drainage works, if it water always went there historically, you can't stop it from going there, right? So if the homeowner wanted to plug this up and now Hollow Tree Ridge Road is starting to back up, the town will have a good lawsuit against the homeowner saying, yeah, our, drainage, went there. our drainage went there, right? So you can't stop it now. Um, I, mean, mm -hmm. I think storm drains religiously in the history was just get the water off the road, send right. it to the lowest point wherever it is, and just let it go. Right. You know, okay. We mm -hmm. do just, much just, better just now. Just think if they cut the water. <laughs> we do much better now. They do much better. Go somewhere. A better job now than historically. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, they would just plop in a pipe. Yeah. And right. this is, this has to be as old as. Yeah. Uh, this is as an old the road. One. Yeah. Road. Right. And that's an old road. Right. So, anyway, anybody else have anything? Ready? No? I okay. appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank, thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on to approval of minutes. Uh, all the commissioners should have received the minutes for January 24th, 2024. Any questions or comments? I, sh I, uh, I assume Jim got you. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Uh, anybody else have any questions or comments? No, Jim, I have a motion to I'll approve make, the minutes. I make a motion to approve the uh, minutes of the Environmental Protection Meeting of January 24, 2024. Second that. All in favor? Aye. 
Okay, uh, moving on to approval of minutes for February 7, 2024. It's a regular meeting. I assume, Jim, you did your magic on that one, too? <laughs> I was able to Good. find one or two uh, suggested edits. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else have anything? You, know, you better, not, Thanks, you better not be leaving this commission. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, can I have a motion to approve that? Yes, sir. I make a motion that uh, to approve the minutes of the meeting of the Environmental Protection Commission for February 7, 2024. And I was absent, so mm -hmm. maybe so, I will second that. Second that. Okay, all in favor? All Done. Right. Okay, uh, there's no agent approvals, there's no other business. Um, by the way, are we having a special meeting in yes. March? Yes, 19th. The 19th. Oh, you set that day. Oh, okay. Thank you for remembering. So, March what time? 19th? I was the only one that had a problem with seven, but if it's a five thirty, I think I could probably make it. Well, it's set at seven. So oh, it is set yeah, at seven. Seven. Okay. What was the date? Because of me, the nineteenth, huh? Tuesday. Tuesday, nineteenth. Tuesday, nineteenth. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, no, it's it's. It is what it is. And actually, you weren't the only one. So I was the only one. No, you weren't. I was not. Thank you, Mr. Phil. Okay, so normally we should I check. Love we, we should check with uh, Michael. Michael, it's because just to make sure we have a. Because there's one, two, three, four, but we should get Michael there because mm -hmm. I I assume Lauren won't be able to make it. You know, God bless her if she does, but you know I have to assume that uh, she won't. And two items for two public hearings for Marianne Lane, mm -hmm. the um, the one who's the a knockdown rebuild, mm -hmm. some interested parties, um, and Hanson Road Bridge. Wait, so they're both that same night? Same night. Okay. okay. Great. And again, the commission thought, you know, public project, public interest. Yep. Yeah. Good idea. So uh, um, that's that. Do we limit it to that or to the extent that I can over the next few days? If anything else, there's, there's probably, there'd be this resolution if you want to add that to it yeah, or do you want to that's why that's quick. Yeah. For Musket Lane. No, you know, no you for uh, not Musket Lane. Um, you have some things to work out with. For that, 670 right? Hollow Tree. Well, with we'll make it a condition. We'll make it a condition. What else what work. else would what else could what else do you think could be on there? Uh, I mean possibly we may get information in on Libby Lane, which was the one with the sump pump. And yet you asked for some additional planting. You asked that they could save that big tree. Mm -hmm. There was the, finaliz the finalizing the, the drainage uh, because this is one of the crushed pipe mm. that it's backing up. Mm -hmm. um, they and had the neighbor's sump pump yep. going in or whatever. And uh, so there wasn't a... I can try with that one, too. The other okay. ones will have to wait till the first week of April. Okay. There's not that That's many right. in the queue. I don't know. Okay. Carolyn's got a problem with one. No. <laughs> yes, you do. What is it? Well, no. I mean, it just sounds like we 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 just had a bombarded um, him with a lot of oh. you know conditions and questions. Are you going to have time to iron all of that out by yeah. then? Yeah. Okay. We want those trees. Trees and ground covers right. and um, explanation why uh, when they knew they had to do remediation to begin with, why they went ahead and put in a deer fence. <laughs> Well, again, it was the builder and the owner, two different mm. elements there. And uh, so I'm glad it came up with the planting plan. That was a... Uh, well, you had to work fast. A bunch of different items besides the planting stuff. You worked pretty hard. I, I looked at you earlier. Yeah. You know, about a number right, about of the sump, the drainage sump arrangements drains, yeah. and, and um, walls and other things. Oh, so, yeah. There yeah, was a so lot there. It wasn't just the, the planting issues they had trouble with. No, they had... They had yeah, compliance yeah. issues, true right. compliance drainage right. issues, and so forth. Yeah. Just as another aside, we didn't forget about at some point doing the the uh, app, the um, regulation change. Right now, I'm engaged in we're rewriting the drainage manual, um, which the town hired Joe Canis to do, and Ed, myself, Jeremy, Fred, and and. Irve, um are working with Dro Joe to it's going to be a, a very substantial change but bringing dairy in up to current thinking on how to address 
drainage and it involves drainage of water quality. So it's toughening up the regulations, toughening up the follow-up, toughening up the, the checklists as you as you go through it. So it's going to be a, a pretty substantial change. So that's being worked out. We're pretty well through that. And the um, other thing that we may have coming up is the wetland map change. I spent quite a bit of time compiling the wetland maps from the past two and a half years that I've been here and since we updated it last and we had the GIS consultant did the comparison of our map to all the maps that I gathered and saved electronically so that should be coming up in the next month or so we have to have a public hearing on it for the changing of the map and so she did a good Excel spreadsheet what changes what's not going to change and then the updated map so we have to go through that again so that's on the horizon um, we're spending a lot more time doing enforcement in terms of compliance with the plans you guys approve and what Amen. the other commissions do good yeah. so it, it it is you know it is um, it's been it's been a challenge but everybody's starting to get it now and they're making plans for making sure that the surveyors are on site and the engineers are on site and not waiting to the last second and planning ahead. The other one that there's been a, a great deal of change is the compliance with the flood regulations. So I go out and do an inspection and we generate lists. They have to fix things. So so there's been a lot more of that. that they have to fix things? Who's they? Well, the Do applicants have to oh, applicant. ensure compliance because Darian didn't really have the greatest record on compliance for FEMA things. So, so much better now. In your drainage rewrite for the application we just heard where there's the, the pipe. A pipe going by the house, does that get a, a fall under that rewritten regulation or um, because it's grandfathered it just... I mean, they'll have to do, I mean, there's going to be a stricter application of, of making sure there's easements. You know, it, it's a it's a lot of work. No, it's a lot no. of work. Absolutely. The um, one thing that we had Joe address specifically, and you're going to love this, is basements and sump pumps. Yeah. And so he did a lot, of, a ton of work on this. And you know, I probably should give you the so you can start to take a look at it. You mean it, the people who are having their sump pumps drain into? So the it's about you know, it's do your soil testing. Recommend that you stay above evidence of, se of seasonal high groundwater. If you cannot, as a last resort, this is how you have to compute the volume and you have to address it. So he has a whole um, part dedicated to that. But we took, when we were involved in, the st it took us four years in Stanford to do the drainage manual. But um, it, ha it has, you know, it has flow charts on how you have to address your drainage, address your water quality, what areas are more important. It's really, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting, it's just a matter of... Mm -hmm. Good. So this is private Good. drainage into storm drains or storm drains and how they operate? It's all, all drainage. Like sediment control and all those... All things. drainage. All, all of the above. All of the above. Okay. So it's, you know, there are the, the um, square footage of um, that triggers the need for a full-blown drainage report it is going to drop from a thousand square feet to 400 square feet Whoa. oh wow but that's consistent with everybody else mm -hmm. you know all the other towns and have the same good. thing good so there's some you know uniform application of standards that's good we did you know compare the Greenwich does the same thing Stanford does the same thing um, and um, so it's going to be it's it's going to be uh, challenging. So when we see it, is it already approved? And no, we, we can make comments on it. Or will it? I think will they, they probably will they listen to, make, to us. I think they're the probably make comments, and I'm thinking that there has to be some sort of endorsement for it. I'm not quite sure. Okay. I mean, like we're going to have to change. Like a public education. Uh, we can see a draft of it. Yeah. You, you, I mean, obviously we can see a draft of yeah. it. and and then you you can get. You know your questions and comments. Okay, there and and then and hopefully they'll get addressed. How long I can tell that? you. I can tell you what we 
did in Stanford, <clears throat> this one was a little, a little bit different because you had to address it to a higher level at these MS4 standards from the state of Connecticut, is that you had to, aside from, which were not really quite there here, is that because Stanford is so large and because it's so diverse in terms of the types of construction and how they treat sanitary sewers and stormwater, is that they're held to a very high standard. So you had to do this. You had, they had to create almost like a department to do water quality stuff and basin cleaning and all kinds of things. That's, that is probably not applicable here. But the, uh, you had to change your regulations. So we have to go through plan and zoning where the stormwater regulation is. We'll have to change <coughs> that. And what you end up doing, you simplify it. As you're saying, stormwater regulations as reflected in the drainage manual that may be from updated from time to time. So you have to do some things to, mm -hmm. to kind of make it work and adopt it. So was, was MS4 based on pollutant levels coming through storm drains or too much volume creating erosion issues or too much sediment going to What was the MS4 in a general concept? Why, why was that needed on okay, It's It's, on it's truly areas? a water quality. Water quality. It's so truly a water quality thing. So what That's they don't want anymore is <clears throat> putting things in the pipe and dumping it out in the river, dumping it directly yeah, out in the lungs. It's water itself. quality was the main issue. It's mostly you generate this this amount of water, you have to um, take care of your water. You're disconnecting from the systems that direct. Mm -hmm. So you're putting it into the ground, you're putting it into rain gardens, you're doing different types of development that, you know, conservation based developments okay. where you know, you get the benefit of reducing your amount of pavement and, and the storm drains that's necessary or pouring rain out there. But you're, you know, you're, you're preserving more open space and things like that. There, there's all these encouragements that are built into it. Okay. But it's more of a water quality thing. It's really, if you ever think about, it, you don't say everybody got to disconnect. You're disconnecting from the storm drain system. You want to hold your water, you want to treat your water on site, and it's only under certain circumstances that you you know, you can't say so you are limited by, you know, your whole, your whole property's ledge, you know, but you have to demonstrate it and maintain records and all kinds of things. Okay. Thanks. But the <clears throat> ours is being tailored for Darien. Right. right. How long is it, the report? No, oh, it's long. Well, yeah. 100 plus pages. Um, I'm not sure if it's that long, oh. but it's, it's Thick. pretty hefty. It'll take a while to read. Filter through. <laughs> but we have uh, good charts joke. in there. Good job. <laughs> That's very, very good. No pun intended. Right. right. <laughs> but I mean, we've been doing our job. I mean, in, in terms of like improving water quality, I mean, oh, yeah. we've been doing when applications come to us and we have the opportunity to try to, you know, improve water quality. We've been doing so, like by putting, you know, requiring the ground covers and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that sort of thing for the water to filter through. Carolyn, uh, Carolyn, yes. We see a minor fraction mm -hmm. of all of the applications for new houses, additions, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. What this will do is. is it's more global. It, no, it puts on everybody. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, a person walks in, an applicant walks in tomorrow and says, I want to do this. Got to refer to that manual. No matter if it's just to be compliant, okay, with, with the local, with our local rules and regs. Okay, now it's different, okay? If, he, if the individual were to, to encroach on the wetlands and water courses, then we see it. Yes. But this applies to everyone. Yeah. Okay, which is, and, and that's why this is such a big deal. Yeah, but it's putting it in writing, it's, it's really codifying it, and what, what the, the, the best thing is it, it makes what the submittal requirements are mm -hmm. very clear. So, no one, you know, and it makes it easier, quite honestly, it makes it easier for the the engineers. So if you have a client that's saying, oh, I don't want to do that, and they could say, it's right in the manual. I have to do it. It's right in the manual. We have to follow the manual. Yeah. It's in the manual. So it makes it, it actually makes it easier for everybody in the long run. Okay. Clear yeah. what you're obliged to do. So we're doing quite a bit. We'll get there. Okay. Anybody else before we adjourn?
Jim? I'll make a motion to adjourn tonight's March 6, 2024 meeting of the Environmental Protection Commission. And second the motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. All right. Good night, Channel 79.